Lauren and I just spent the last month backpacking. Backpacking? Uh, Lauren's got her bag. I've got my bag. And then we've got <laughs> Hudson's belongings. Europe. Before any of you ask, yes, we think it was worth it. No, he may not remember it, but these are Hudson's most impressionable years, and we like to think he's a little bit more adaptable and maybe a little more outgoing because of this trip. But let's talk about what you're here to see, an assessment of the quality of door hardware used throughout various regions of Europe. I've always believed that door hardware is a good barometer of the level of craftsmanship in a building. Generally speaking, if you spend thousands on entry door hardware, you might also find a room made entirely of mahogany. Slap the cheapest quick set doorknob on as possible and you'll probably find Chinese drywall with knockdown texture. Here's a few things that stood out to me. First, the most striking difference is that they all vary in size, shape, and craftsmanship. The standard door size in the US is 80 inches tall by either 32 or 36 inches wide. Boring. In Europe, it appears as though every door must be custom made, probably to accommodate the varying opening sizes in all the old buildings. There are short doors, tall doors, fat doors, skinny doors, doors that match the decor and doors that don't. But once you dig a little deeper, you'll find that the biggest difference is actually not the shape, but the security of the doors. In every single Airbnb we stayed at, every single door had a multi-point locking mechanism. Meaning rather than just one deadbolt that you lock up at night, they had three or five or sometimes seven different rods or bars near the handle, top, bottom, middle, and sides. Even in Budapest, where the door was obviously just a cheap laminated hollow core door, they still had a multi-point lock that would put mid-range lock sets here in the US to shame. It'd be easier to bust a hole through this door before breaking it open. I hate keys. In fact, I've even gone so far as to add keyless locks and keyless start to my vehicles in order to avoid carrying any keys at all. But European keys are works of art. For example, this is just a simple key switch for an automatic door opener in the Netherlands. But even they had to throw in a perpendicular plane just for extra security. My favorite keys by far, and the accompanying hardware, had to be in Paris. I wish you could just feel how substantial all the components were. When you pushed the key in, it pushed back out at you. With what I would estimate to be two to three pounds of preload, as soon as you release the latch, the keys jump back out in your hands with a satisfying click. After deploying the five point latch, you had a second, entirely different shaped key to lock the multi-point bars in place. So even if you did manage to pick the main lock, all of the bolts would stay in place until you picked the second one below simultaneously. Incredible, and I'm not really sure why. We were staying in a fairly upscale neighborhood in the 7th district. With all this gushing over brass and steel, there had to be something I didn't like about these locks, right? Well, actually yes, and it's a pretty big one. Most of them required not only a key to unlock the doors from the inside, but many of them required to open the latch, whether the door was locked or unlocked. Here we're familiar with the little knob that lets you lock or unlock the deadbolt from the inside without a key. To not have this feature is a huge safety oversight. If there was a fire in the house and your keys were inaccessible, how would you escape? The only reason I can come up with that this isn't a problem is that most buildings in Europe are stone or concrete and thus less likely to become engulfed in flames. But I'd love to hear in the comments if anyone can give me a legitimate reason why this isn't a big problem. Besides that, I also wasn't a huge fan of the center doorknobs in Western Europe. Particularly with huge heavy doors, you have so much less leverage with the knob right in the middle. I do have two notable mentions for hardware. The first was in London, which was more or less underwhelming from a hardware and craftsmanship perspective, but this doorstop really stood out to me. This was just simple elegance. But perhaps the most ingenious thing I've ever seen are the windows in Germany. When we walked through our Airbnb, I assumed this large pane of glass on the left was just a window, but then our host showed us how to access the balcony. incredible and ridiculously overbuilt. Not to mention every single window in the whole building had the same mechanism. I was delighted to find that our windows in Budapest were of the same design, which gave us a nice view of the city from our window and even fireworks from above one night. So there you have it. Last week's video is about locks. This week's video also about locks. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.
Ha <laughs> ha